Hey Cake Face fam, so in honor of Lunar New Year, I am going to try on this lipstick for the first time. <sighs> it's a bittersweet moment. Don't want to ruin the design, but it's time to use this lipstick. I think it's just beautiful. I can't wait to try it on. I figured I would share the experience with you on camera. So I'm going to use the lipstick first and then see. I mean, maybe I don't even need a lip liner. We shall see. This was one of my favorite Christmas gifts from Ryan. And she's just so beautiful. And what better time to use it than Chinese New Year. So, no more putting it off. <laughs> Why am I so nervous? Okay. <sighs> oh. So far so good. Already ruining the design for sure. Feels quite creamy and lightweight. The color I have is Empress M01. I don't know, it looks pretty good. I don't think I'm going to use a lip liner. But yeah, from the first use, the very top embossing is gone. But I feel good about my decision to use the lipstick because I've been wanting to know what it's like, what it looks like on. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, so for the rest of the face, oh, I can't stop staring at my lips in the mirror because it just looks so vibrant and beautiful. Very smooth. I love it, love it, love it. Okay, I think I want a little bit of coverage. I'm not going to go in with a foundation, but I do want to use a little bit of concealer. Namely, right around the eyes and on spots. So, underneath the eyes, I'm pulling in the Becca Under Eye Brightening Corrector. I'm taking this with my NARS Soft Matte concealer brush. It's the brush that was advertised to be used with the Soft Matte Complete Concealer. And then just giving it an extra pat with my fingers. I'm gonna brighten right underneath the brows as well. A little bit around the mouth. Then for concealer, in my skin color, I'm using the NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer, pretty much like always. And this one is in vanilla. I'm going to be using vanilla and nougatine, light 2.2. Vanilla is a little bit lighter. I'm going to start with that color. Right at the tops of my cheekbones. I have a little bit of discoloration. When I do a bold red lip, I like to cancel superfluous redness around the skin. Like, redness in the cheeks is pretty, but when I have red spots around the mouth or on the forehead, it can really distract and muddle up the effect of a red lip on my complexion. So I like to make sure my complexion work is precise, clean, and it'll make the red lip pop and look nice and intentional. Now with my slightly darker color, I'm going to use this for spot concealing around the edges of the look or the face. I'm 
really sort of taking my time with this because I don't want to go in with heavy coverage everywhere. I want the skin to look very naturally flawless. So now that like the major planes of where I needed coverage have been touched, I'm going to now go in with a small brush and really spot conceal the little spots. This here is the Paradise Makeup AQ812 brush. I don't know where I got this from. I, I don't know. <laughs> Somewhere. I'm going to get kind of close with a mirror and analyze my skin. If any spots are raised or textured, I like to make sure I go in at different angles with my brush just to make sure I'm getting all sides of the spot. Otherwise, if you're hitting a spot, a bump, or a series of bumps just from the one side, you'll end up most likely bringing focus to that texture because it's like dry brushing where you have a color underneath and then a color that's just like sweeping the surface. And if you ever have a stubborn spot, so what I do is I'll, I'll conceal with a little bit of concealer. If it's still showing, I might go in with a little bit of powder and then go back in with more concealer. And when you sandwich an area like that, it'll really build coverage and also create a nice long wear. I'll sometimes do that when I have a lupus rash that's just very stubborn because it's actually a different texture to the rest of my skin. It's a little bit slicker. So makeup doesn't always build well on those areas. And I'm using a padding motion with my finger and not a swiping motion to retain coverage right in that little spot. Now, of course, if you don't have time, your easiest, quickest bet is just to use a, a good coverage foundation and do a nice layer throughout the face. But I find that the more I practice spot concealing in this manner, the faster the process is and it's really quite rewarding in how my skin looks both in person and in photographs. Even though I do have very dry skin, I like to go in with this soft matte concealer because luminous concealers tend to be more emollient, great for covering larger areas of the skin and bring some shine, a little bit more movable. Whereas something like this, you put it down, it won't draw attention to the area because it's not shiny, essentially. It mimics the texture, like the natural texture of my skin and it won't be so slippery and move around. Okay, now that I'm done with spot concealing, I'm going to take some Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder. And I'm using the Wayne Goss Artist Brush in the small version. Lightly setting right underneath the eyes where I did put a couple layers of concealer. Around the mouth where my concealer meets my lipstick around my nose where I have some larger, more obvious pores, as well as the tops of my cheekbones where I used a bit more concealer. Okay, I think this is a nice opportunity to use my Lunar New Year brushes. So this one is a Koyudo one. It's a squirrel hair. I think I want to use this beautiful Chanel blush duo. <laughs> Some people are playing with my dog outside. Right here. And I'm going to start with the deeper side. Pat this into the skin. I don't want to disrupt the concealing that I did so carefully. 
place down so that first layer I want to really just pat it in instead of swiping to want to move any of that concealer. I'm going to use a little bit of both sides now. And sweep that kind of all over the cheek area. A bit on the eyes as well. I'm torn between using this beautiful golden color from Chanel versus this pink cold from Pat McGrath. I think I'm going to start with the pink gold, the same brush and sweep that onto the backs of the cheekbones. My Hakuhodo F6441. I'm going to bring that down my nose. I love how skin-like this highlighter is, so I'm bringing that more along the areas of the face where I want my skin to look so naturally luminous. I think I want to use a cream bronzer. These are my Salt New York cream products. This nice warm color in light medium. This one right here. I'm just using my fingertips. really don't want too much. Just a bit. I'm going to use the lighter bronzer for fair skin and bring that along the top hairline. And I'm going to take the sculpting color. It's like a contour shade. It's a little bit cooler toned. I'm dragging this across the jawline. I'm bringing whatever is left on my finger across the sides of my nose. A little bit of eye primer would be good. And that was my Viseart. I'm going to take a little bit of the peach from the Pat McGrath rose quad. So a little bit of this color. I'm going to tap that onto the lid here. With this little vivid goat hair brush from I think this is Coyudo. It's just a large flat eyeshadow brush. I'm blending the shadow out. For a little bit more glow, I'm taking the Ciate the Velvet palette and picking up this really sparkly pink champagne and I'm patting that right in the center. Stopping right at the uh, eye socket line. To finish off this look, I'm going to give myself a quick spritz with a facial mist. This is my Sulva Sue First Care Activating Serum Mist. I get to start a brand new mascara today. This is the Chanel Terracotta. Le Volume de Chanel Terracotta. Very excited. So I'm going to lightly coat my lashes with this. I love a good brown mascara. Okay, K-Face fam, so this is the final look. I love how it turned out. I think that the glowy natural complexion with the bold red lip is very me. Not exactly mask 
appropriate, I suppose, but I still love my lipsticks, even throughout the whole not really going anywhere, always wearing a mask situation that we're in. I still love my lipsticks. It's just me. It makes me feel good. A lot of you guys probably understand and feel the same way. But anyway, this is it for me, and I hope that you enjoyed. I will catch you in my next one. Bye.